All right, we're gonna get to it. We're gonna be installing the rear wheel on this spin bike. It's an internal three-speed hub. It's got a coaster brake and automatic shifting right here with the internal hub, Shimano style. And we got uh, somewhat of a, it's like an internal braking system here, kind of like a, like a drum brake style. But uh, this, as you can see, is still connected. First step, identify your wheel. We got your gearing on this side. So if you're on the bike, pointed that way. Left side, non-drive side. Drive side over here with the chain. So we're gonna flip this wheel over. We got the gear on the right side. This side over here. So we're gonna be working in the stand just for teaching purposes. And I do recommend a repair stand. It's gonna make your life way easier. It's gonna be your best investment right here. So. Let's put this in the right direction. So I don't wanna be working up here. I don't have good leverage. We're gonna tilt the bike. Get this in the down position. So now we have the dropouts here. These are horizontal dropouts because they run lengthwise, almost parallel to the ground. So again, we got our gear on the right side. Coming up here, first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach your brake. And as long as we keep this line straight, and there is some notching, so get that on there. And then our line should be fairly straight in line with this tubing right here. That's our chain stay. That's a whole, whole, whole right there. That's, so that's the inside. This is gonna be facing like that. So we wanna be reading some, some wording here. There's some stickers here. So this is our chrome silver part. And then we have our bolt and our cable down here. So it's gonna go just like that in that position. We're gonna bring our wheel up. And then the wheel has some notchings. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, there's probably about 12 or 16 notches there. And that braking is gonna go and match onto the notch. You may have to shift a little bit forward, a little bit back, um, but usually pops on really easy. So this comes up, bring the wheel up. And just fit that on. And you can kind of feel it kind of click down and then you're gonna to have to hold it there. And then we have our nut that's going to go on top of this. And this nut is gonna be finger tight. So make sure you have your nut handy before you do this process because everything, you're gonna to have to be holding this wheel at all times. So my nut's over on the table. And then this nut right here, that's a pretty good size nut, but you're gonna screw that on. And when I first took this off, it was finger tight finger meaning I can just do use my fingers I'm not using a hand tool and it's not even gonna be very tight I just kind of feel boom it made contact with the surface this is no longer wiggling I can't take it off so if you are working alone like I am right now I went ahead and got a fastener of some sort and attach the tire to the rack but if you don't have a rack you may have to attach the tire to some part of the frame you know in this case it might have to be somewhere around here um, or you have a third a second person which would be great but i'm working alone so we got to improvise so this is going to allow me to come back over here and this is our our i think it's it's basically it's a brake nut and we're going to be using a 17 millimeter wrench on that one so if you don't have a torque wrench, we're gonna just use a regular wrench, but Shimano calls, calls for a 20 to 25 torque setting, a newton meter, 20, 25 newton meter torque setting on this. So problem is though, when I go to turn this, when you go to turn this to tighten it going clockwise, the whole brake arm wants to move. So we somehow have to hold this tight and then turn this nut. So I went ahead and got a rag, I plate press pressure down this way, but I'm gonna get in this weird position just so I don't block the camera. Holding this arm stationary and then coming in with your 17 mil, tightening clockwise until we get that pretty tight. And as you can see, the whole wheel still wants to move because there's quite a bit of torque needs to be put down. Calling for 20 to 25 Newton meters. If you do have a torque wrench, then go ahead and set your torque wrench um, anywhere maybe in between 20 to 25, 20 to 22.5. Um, we can set it here and as you turn you can see that still wants to move so either you or you get creative and hold that and again for camera purposes i'm just going to hold it in this position and then you come with your tool 
and go ahead and apply your pressure until you get your desired torque setting, which in this case I'd put about 22.5, somewhere in there, and just tighten until we get that and you're good to go. Once you get that tight, this should be nice and tight. There should not be any wet rattling or any movement left to right if you're jiggling. Everything's nice and tight. It still rotates. If it does uh, have difficulty rotating, um, to line it up to our frame here, you may have to loosen up that bolt a little bit to clock the position and then retighten it. But in this case, there's no issue. Now the wheel's ready to go back, get this axle back into our slotted drop out here. And then the next step is to gather your chain. Make sure your chain's not all twisted up. So if your chain got a little tangled, it looks like it has some knots in it, don't fear, it can come out. Um, it was put on, no one took it off and made some knots. You just have to take your time and, and kind of undo these. So if you see something like that, we just have to, you know, take your time and undo it. Um, and then make sure your chain, your chain, like this one fell off of the front chain ring, that's okay. Um, in some cases we can leave it like that, go ahead and put the rear wheel on and then come back and do this after. Or if you feel you, you can probably do both. So it's up to you if you wanna get this chain on there. Um, if you can't get fingers in there, go ahead and take the chain cover off. This is the chain guard cover. There's one, two, I think three Phillips screws. It comes off very easily, very quickly with a hand Phillips screwdriver. Um, but in some cases you can, if you feel like playing with this a little bit, we can kind of get this going use the cranks to try and catch the chain and, and get it back on the teeth. So, just make sure your fingers don't get caught in there under the chain and get caught on the teeth. And then if your kickstand might get in the way, so just keep an eye on that. You can either close it or open it, see what's best. So I think this chain's back on there enough, at least right now. Like I said, we can always go back. We will have some space. So when we do bring the wheel up, the wheel's gonna be coming up. This is the axle here with the threads. These are gonna come up and fit right into our horizontal slots right here. These are the dropouts. And you just gotta be on both sides we're coming in. So I did connect a little piece of plastic here to, it's a strap. You can use straps of different types. You can use pedal straps. This is kind of like a plastic clip, clip strap. That was just holding the wheel for me so I can move the camera around. And Cause I am connected down here and I didn't want to put any strain on the cable. I didn't want to let the wheel hang by the cable. We could accidentally bend the cable. So we're going to come up. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab my chain and we're going to put the chain around that rear gear. So the chain should be coming over on the right side of the wheel. And I'm going to raise the wheel up. So left hand is controlling the wheel and my right hand is guiding the chain onto the gear. And then we'll slowly bring this up. This, the shifting can stay last. That can just stay out of the way. And then we're gonna rotate. And this, if you have a bolt, you can back the bolt off or have the bolt off completely. But sometimes I like to leave it here, have it ready to go, but just give yourself plenty of room, back that off. Same with the gear on the bolt on the right. So once that's up, I'm in the dropouts there. And what just happened there was the gear, the chain stayed on the rear gear, but it just came off the front chain ring, which is okay. We can always go back to that. We can always shift the wheel forward, create some slack and get that chain back on the front cassette. So right now the wheel, it'll stay right there, but it will fall. So I gotta be either very quick or fasten it or don't let go. Cause if I walk away, the wheel will fall at this point. And then notice this silver bolt, or at least the shape, the shape is gonna be specific to the right side. This is the drive side. And then if you notice this here, this little piece right here, be very careful with this. This is our shifting. This is our little transmission. It's on a spring, spring loaded. So that's, say that's gear one, goes in halfway, that's gear two, all the way, gear three, or I could have that in reverse. It could be three, two, one, but this could fall out and you could lose it. And it does have a light amount of grease. It's probably a white lithium grease. So keep an eye on this, either take it out, put it somewhere safe, or just try not to disturb it. But this bolt right here is specific to the right side. It looks like a little top hat. And just a couple threads right there, and you're good. That way you have plenty of space to work with. So here's our axle. This is our horizontal dropout, the slotted area. 
You can actually see, if you look closely on the paint, there's an old witness mark where the bolt had dug into the paint and was attaching the wheel, so that's giving you an idea. As long as it was placed in the correct place to, to begin with, it'll give you an idea where this axle should end up. But very closely, you wanna look at this axle. This axle has threads, and then it has a flat side right here where they shaved off the thread. So we have a flat side here. This is a flat piece of steel metal ruler right here. So we got a flat side here and directly on the other side are some other flat sides. Now the flat side is facing in this direction. We actually want it to be in line with our horizontal dropout. So in most cases you can just use your finger, but you want to hang on to the wheel with your right hand and just rotate this. And you might have to move the wheel a little bit and I can rotate it a little bit. If you're having trouble rotating it, you can also use a eight millimeter wrench and you can use the open side and that'll also rotate it. We just hang on, to your, hang on to the wheel and you can rotate it and you do want it to line up. So we have flat side on top, flat side on bottom and it's lining up with our slot here. And then, then we're ready for our yellow washer and this yellow washer has two little prongs. Those prongs are gonna be fitting inside Let's see, and they're actually slotted too, so we do have flat sides, so that's actually fitting on perfectly there. It can go on two ways, either the top or the bottom. So that's telling me what I just told you is incorrect, so now we gotta turn it, probably a quarter turn or so. Just like that, turn that with my hands. Now we want that, those little prongs are sitting inside, and then we're ready for our attaching bolt right there. And then we can go from there. So here you want to get the chain on. So chain fell off on the front chain ring. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the rear. We're going to place that chain on. Boom. And right now the wheel's staying in place all by itself, but uh, that doesn't mean it doesn't want to fall because I haven't tightened up my either of my bolts left or right side. So now we got uh, lots of slack here on the chain. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug up these bolts a little bit, get it so it's almost touching, but still be able to move the wheel forwards and backwards if I need to. So either you can try your hand at uh, working the chain, getting it back on the chain ring, which is right under here. This is our chain guide right here, or chain guard. Uh, if it's in the way, if you're having trouble, just go ahead and take this off. Comes off really easy. It is a soft, flexible metal, but we have one, two, and then our third screws down here, and these are just Phillips. So you can use a Phillips screwdriver. I'll go ahead and take this off so you know how easy it is. And make sure you can get your tool in there. The tool sinks in there real nice. So you're gonna have to push really hard straight in there to keep the tool sunken in as you're unloosening. That way the tool doesn't slip out, and that's where we start to strip our screws or bolts. So pushing inward, and then counterclockwise, lefty loosey. And if it's a little hard or rusty, that's where you wanna use some WD-40 or some type of uh, liquid wrench, something that's gonna break down the rust and um, allow that screw to come out much easier. Same with the top over here. Push down and unloosen. The screws are pretty short. And then the third one, which is right down here, we're pushing up and unloosening. Actually, this one's pretty loose. So right now this is ready to come off, so be ready to catch it. Just like that. <laughs> and that's it. So now we've exposed, this is our crank arm. We got one crank arm, two crank arm, and then this is our chain ring right here. This is the chain's gonna go back on. So right now the wheel is loose. Either you have someone holding it for you or you keep a uh, hand on it because it will want to slide forward and then fall down. So right now I'm going to need more slack than what it's, what it's giving me because I need to come up and over the ring. So that means this wheel has to slide forward. So I have about approximately an inch, inch and a quarter to slide forward before the wheel wants to fall off the bike. So I can kind of slide it forward a bit. Just be careful. Pull too hard, the wheel will come completely off the bike. And then that created some slack. And the wheel still has some friction, it's holding in place. And there's a piece of metal here. This is the frame for the chain guard. So you might have to gently maneuver the chain around that. So I'm gonna try real gently here. So chain's getting a little tight there. So I'm gonna go for the bottom. And here we have the frame where the 
chain guard bolts into. So let's see, basically got to pull some slack out. So the wheel was actually able to rotate forward, but you have to make sure that wheel doesn't want to fall down and out of the bike. So if you get a portion of the chain engaged on some teeth here, if you spin the crank clockwise, the wheel will turn as well. That will give you some more slack. It'll actually drive the chain onto the chain ring, but also the wheel may want to come off the bike, so you got to be very careful. But I'm just going to try and pull some slack. There we go. And then, and voila. So we got to try that again. So if that happens to you, no big deal. Uh, the wheel is still being hung on by the brake over here, but we are putting a little stress on the cable. So that's not a good thing. We don't want that to happen repeatedly. I'm going to come back up. We're going to get our axle back into the dropout. Just follow your left and right side and make sure your yellow washer is clear in position correctly. There we go. So actually the chain is probably half or three quarters of the way on. So I'm gonna hang on to this wheel with my left hand, come over here and try and get the rest of that chain on. I'll let the wheel slide forward a little bit to create some slack, but still got a good hand on it. Now the chain's all the way in on the chain ring. Now I can pull back. We just created, we pulled what slack was there and made it tight. We created tension. So at this point, we are ready to tighten up our bolts here. All right, so at all times, this wheel will want to run away from you going forward and falling out of our horizontal dropouts. So I'm always keeping a hand on it. I'm pulling back right now, back towards my chest keeping some tension on the chain. You'll notice once you start losing that tension, if the wheel slides forward, your chain's gonna get a little sloppy here. And then you'll probably have like another uh, few millimeters before this wheel wants to fall back out. So I'm gonna keep some pressure on it. And just wanna make sure your chain's on the rear gear here. And then make sure your chain is on the front chain ring. So all that looks good. Um, at this point, we are, I'd say more than halfway home. And then once we tighten up our bolts here, we're gonna be putting our, our little transmission, our shifter and the brakes already hooked up um, and then we're good to go. So at this point, we wanna pull tension. So right now, just as an example, that looseness right there is way too much looseness. We wanna pull a little tighter and make sure your adjustment on your repair stand is tight, otherwise the whole bike is gonna tilt this way. So as I'm pulling back um, with some pressure, this chain is now much tighter. So that little bit of movement that you see how the chain has, that's what we want right there. So we're trying to accomplish that, pulling the wheel back, creating this tension, but also making sure that the wheel is, is crook is straight. We don't want the wheel tilted to the left or tilted to the right, because this tire will run into the frame here on the right side or the left side. This is our chain stay. It's either rubbing here or it may rub up here at the seat stay. It could rub on this right side or the left side, depending. So we're gonna make sure the wheel is centered as possible while keeping tension. So your left arm may get a little tired and fatigued, but um, you can do it. So at this point, repair stand, everything on the repair stand is nice and tight. 